Good morning, students. Welcome to the second session of history class. In the last session, I spoke to you about the town planning of the Harappan cities. Now, our understanding of the Harappan cities is limited because of the script, because the script has not been deciphered. So we have to depend on material remains for understanding the Harappan culture. Let us take a quick recap of what was taught in lecture one. In lecture one, I spoke about the town planning of the Harappan cities with the case study of Mohenjo-daro. So the city was divided into two parts, upper town, the uh, was also known as Citadel. It had two most important public buildings. One was the granary, which shows that uh, surplus production was there. Second important building was the Great Bath. And uh, the Great Bath was a rectangular tank and the historians now largely believe that it was used for ritual bathing. No palace, no major building has been found to understand whether there were, where the rulers lived. When we come to the lower town, the lower town was following the grid pattern. So the roads cut across each other at right angles and the city was divided into blocks. The roads with street drains were first laid down and then the houses were built on it. These kind of uh, uh, town planning system is not um, found even in the present day modern cities in India. Then if you see the layout of the house, the layout of the house, if you see it was, there was a central courtyard surrounded by rooms. There were, the central courtyard did not have any roof over it. Single story, double story houses have been found. And uh, a most important feature has been that each house had a bathroom. It was mostly placed at the, towards the back so that the drain or the refuse could be connected to the street drain. So each house had one, one wall, which, which was there next to the street drain for it to send its refuse. We found that the drainage system was extremely advanced, which shows that the Harappans laid great emphasis on sanitation. The drains were built of burnt bricks. The houses also were built of burnt bricks, but there have been instances, instances of houses not being built of burnt bricks, but the drains were always built of burnt bricks. At regular intervals, there were pan holes, and which shows that you see that the, um, that the drains were cleaned regularly. However, refuse was not always carted away because there, are, there is evidence of refuse being piled up. Let us see the subsistence strategies. Now, mature Harappan culture developed in some of the areas occupied by early Harappan culture. Suddenly the mature Harappan culture did not come about. You find that um, the early Harappan cultures translated into mature Harappan culture. Harappans ate a wide range of plant and animal products, including fish. Evidence of dietary practices are found in remains of charred grains and seeds. Grains found at Harappan sites include wheat, barley, lentil, chickpea, and sesame. Millets are found from sites in Gujarat. Rice has been found rarely, and if you see the cropping pattern, you will see that even in present day Punjab, rice is not grown so much. Animal bones found at Harappan sites include cattle, sheep, goats, buffaloes, and pigs. Studies done by zoologists indicate that these animals were domesticated. Bones of fish and fowl are also found. The bones of wild animals have also been found, but the historians have not been able to find out whether they were eaten or not. Let us see the agricultural technologies. The representations on seals and terracotta sculpture indicate that the bull was known. And you can see that the terracotta bull picture I have given. Terracotta models of the plow have been found at sites in Cholistan and at Banavapali in Haryana. The terracotta plow, if you see in the photograph, you will see that uh, it is not different from the ones which are found in modern days. Traces of irrigation canals have been found at Shortogai in Afghanistan. 
Traces of rainwater harvesting have also been found in Dhalavira in Gujarat, which shows that the Harappans uh, were made arrangements for irrigation in areas where probably the rainwater was not enough. Now let us look at this figure. These are copper tools found in excavations. Probably they were used for harvesting. Tracking social differences. Now, one way of understanding whether there were social differences in the Harappan society is by looking at first the towns, and that is why I taught you the towns first. The evidence of upper town and lower town shows that there were some sort of social and economic differences. But Harappan civilization, probably the rulers believed in concepts of egalitarian equality because it is the only civilization which has provided for the poor. The poor had paka houses. No other civilization corresponding to the time has done that. You were taught Mesopotamian civilization last year and you found that uh, the paka houses were not there for the common people. Another difference, but uh, another thing which you have to keep in mind is that this so much of building activity required mobilization of labor. This mobilization of labor could only happen if there were social differences. Maybe there were rulers who organized this kind of a labor and this kind of town planning was then come about. Now, the second thing is the burials. How, did, how were the dead laid? Now, if you see the dead were generally laid in pits. In some, the hollowed out spaces were lined with bricks. Now, does it indicate social differences? It is difficult to say as the script remains undeciphered. So in each question, when you are attempting about Harappa, you have to use the words probably, maybe, some historians. Why? Because we cannot say anything for sure. The script has not been deciphered. Scattered burials as well as discrete symmetries have been found at different sites. Skeletal remains are few, which suggests cremation was also practiced. And the proof we get from cyanury urns containing human bones and ashes. Now let us see the items which have been found inside the burials. On the left hand side, you see the copper mirror. And on the right hand side, you see the pots which, were, which have been found during burials. So earthen pots containing food grains were placed in some graves. Some graves contain pottery and ornaments. Thus, there appears to be a belief in the afterlife. Jewelry has been found in burials of both men and women. Copper mirrors have also been found. But on the whole, Harappans did not believe in burying precious items. Now let us see differences of burial practices which have been found in various places. If we see Kalimangan on the other hand, you will see that the graves were arranged neatly in groups of six or eight. Sometimes bodies were wrapped in cloth or reed shrouds. Pottery was also buried in some cases. Copper mirror was found in a grave of a woman. Harappa and Moj Lothal, if you see, they were not organized properly. At Lothal, two or three graves have shown burial of two individuals. But this does not indicate Sati system, as in one of the graves which have been found, two males were buried together. Now, see this circular structure which has been found in Dhalabira. The circular structure is believed to be either a grave or a memorial, even though no skeletons or human remains have been found near to it. Let us sum this up. We can say that in burials, following common things have been found. Bodies were laid in the north-south direction. The general practice was that the body was laid on the back and head was in the north. Some gray graves were brick-lined while others were not. But we do not know whether this indicates social differences. Women were generally buried with ornaments and copper mirror. In some graves, pottery have been found, which indicates belief in life after death. But you have to understand that, that uh, you know, it was very, very simple burial. You do not find the magnificent burials which have been found in the Egyptian pyramids. Now, another way to understand social and economic differences is by classifying objects which were termed as luxuries, and objects which were termed as utilitarian. The luxurious goods, 
Some objects were luxuries if they were rare or made from costly non-local materials or with complicated technologies. So the historians have identified faience bottles. These were little pots of faience. This was a material made of ground sand or silica mixed with color and a gum and then fired. These were probably considered precious because they were difficult to make. Gold was rare and probably precious. See a composite tubular bead which has been found. All gold jewelry found at Harappan sites was recovered in hoards. Rare objects made of valuable materials are generally concentrated in large settlements like Mohenjo-daro and Harappa and are rarely found in small settlements. The same thing goes with the faience. Now the problem with faience came when the, when the historians found that the spindle worlds were also using faience. So then they found it difficult to classify it as, as a luxurious thing. Different types of pottery were used by the Harappans, such as painted red and blackware. If you look at the picture given here, you will see that the pots, the shapes are almost what we use in the present day uh, societies also. They're not different. So there were various types of pottery. One was the glazed pottery of Harappa. It is the earliest example of its kind in the ancient world. Polychrome, this type of pottery is rare and found only of small vases, which were decorated with geometric patterns, mostly in red, black, and green. The color was applied after it was baked. In size, this is also found rarely and has been found only on the basis of the pans. But the utensils which were used for cooking, you find that at the bottom layer, no design has been found. Now we go to craft production. Chanhudaro has been identified by historians as the center of craft production. Craft production included production of beads, shells, metals, seals, etc. Stones like carnelian, jasper, quartz, and statite, metals like copper, bronze, and gold, as well as shell, faience, terracotta were used as inputs. A wide variety of shapes made of statite have been found. How statite microbeads were made are a mystery, even now, because the same kind of technology is used even now. The red color of carnelian was made by firing the yellowish raw material and beads at various stages of production. Bronze smiths produced not only tools, but also weapons such as axes, saws, knives, and spears. Now, how do historians identify centers of production? The archaeologists look for raw materials and tools and also the leftover refuse. Locate Chanodaro on the map which has been given in your book. It was a tiny settlement exclusively devoted to craft production, including bead making, shell cutting, metal cutting, seal making, and weight making. Craft production was also undertaken in large cities as Mohenjo-daro and Harappa. Now look at this map which I have given of Lothal. You can notice the bead factory and the bead kiln, which is mentioned on the map. Indus beads have been discovered in Ur, which is in present-day Iraq, and Jalalabad in Afghanistan. It has been noted that modern bead makers in the Khambat area are still using the same technique. Now let us see from where the materials were procured from. So there were two, two ways, one from within the subcontinent and the other from distant lands. We have found his terracotta toy models of bullock carts and I have given a picture of it. This suggests that it was an important means of transporting goods and materials. Clay was locally available, but stone, timber, and metal had to be procured from outside the alluvial plain. Shell was procured from Nageshwar, Balakot, and Lothal. Lapis lazuli, a blue stone which was highly valued, was procured from Shotogai in Afghanistan. Carnelian was procured from Lothal. Statite from South Rajasthan and North Gujarat. Metal from Rajasthan. Copper from Khetri region of Rajasthan and gold from South India. You have to memorize all these things. Let us see the materials which were brought from distant land. Copper was brought from Oman. 
chemical analysis shows that both Omani copper and Harappan artifacts have traces of nickel. A distinctive Harappan vessel coated with a thick layer of black clay has been found at Omani sites. Historians largely believe that this was used to carry uh, liquids because the black clay stopped percolation of liquids. Copper found at Mesopotamian sites also contain traces of nickel. Harappan seals, weights, dyes, and beads have also been found. Probably communication with Oman, Bahrain, and Mesopotamia was there. We also find depiction of ships and boats on seals, which show that, um, that probably the ships and boats were used to transport this material. In Mesopotamian texts, there, are, there is two mention. One, the word Meluha, which has been largely identified with Harappa, and the Haja bird. So historians have identified Haja bird as the peacock. Let us see the commonly asked board questions. Please note these down. You have to do these in the copies apart from the assignments which I send you. If there is any difficulty in, in doing these questions, if you require any clarification, please contact. Thank you.